it will depend on how many people have papers that are already in a situation that they can be reviewed, well, reviewed by, you know, informally reviewed by us here during this semester until the beginning of December. So for those of you who are uh, more advanced, I have progressed more into writing a paper, uh, what I will try and arrange is, uh, you know, one person reading other, uh, the other person's uh, paper and acting as a reviewer, because I, I do believe that the best way we can learn how to write good papers is when we start reviewing papers. So don't miss the opportunity of reviewing papers whenever you have a chance. Uh, my wife says that this, this is like clockwork. We work for free. Of course, nobody pays reviewers. Uh, it's part of our academic duties, let's say. But it's part of academic duty that goes completely invisible. You know, uh, let's say the, the deans of our schools do not, are, do not care how many papers we have reviewed. Uh, the, you know, um, it, it's still important for the, of course, the community. If, if you write papers, someone will have to read them and, and, and review them, right? So I always had, at least for, for myself, I always thought that for each paper that I wrote in my life, I would have to re have reviewed at least three or four papers just let's say, to keep the balance of the system, right? Uh, my, idea, my, my idea was that if I have a 50% acceptance rate, which is a good acceptance rate, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have that. Uh, so if I write, let's say, three papers, that will require at least six reviewers to be involved, right? So if six reviewers had to be involved to, to read just my, 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 the papers that I write, not the papers that are published, right? Uh, so if I, if I, for my three papers, I generated, a, a, let's say, a load of work in the system of six reviews, I should be prepared to at least do six reviews, uh, just so that we keep the system going, right? Uh, but, but I had that, that, feel, that, that, that uh, yeah, calculation for myself. I, in fact, I, I hardly ever have refused to do reviews. More recently, I have because, I mean, I do at least four or five reviews a month, which is a lot. Uh, you know, because, um, of course, when you're reviewing papers, it's not like reading papers in the sense that you, you're telling people what they, they still have to improve and you have to be very, um, well, as precise as you can. And, and, uh, people don't like uh, others saying that they, they have to work more. So you, the reviewer always has to put an effort in, in, into showing the, the author that the paper is still not, it's not only saying, yeah, I like it or no, I don't like it. And, and it's not like that. You, you have to put a lot of effort into showing people why you still don't like their work, uh, why you still think that their work needs improvement. Um, and this takes a lot of time. Uh, but, but at the same time, I would say, I have to tell you that it's the, the best way to learn to write our own papers, because when we pay attention to the problems that other authors have in their papers, we start realizing that we are not that perfect in writing our own uh, material. And, and we start solving the issues in our own papers before we send them to review. Uh, so we are not wasting other people's time with things that we already know that are, that, that are problems and that need to be fixed. We do that first and then we send the paper to review, right? Of course, sending the paper to, 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 to reviewers um, uh, doesn't uh, require that the perfect is already absolutely perfect because we want to have these other insights from other people. But at least my, I, I know, I'm sort of perfectionist in, in what I do, and I think that most people in academia, uh, so it probably happens with you as well, we tend to be perfectionists. We, we tend to uh, try and do the best we can, uh, and, uh, and, and, and I think that it's a good thing if we spend a little more time with our papers than a little less time than we thought it would be uh, reasonable, right? It's better to, sometimes I even tell my students, you know, uh, papers are like wine. They need time to mature. So when you're tired, when you're sick of that paper and you want to send it to, to a conference or, to a, or to, to a journal because you cannot see it any longer, sit on it for a couple of months and then go back to that paper. And when you read your own paper two months later, you have already become sort of a reader of someone else's paper in the sense that you wrote that in the past. You don't remember every single detail of what you wrote. And then as a reader, you start noticing the gaps, notice, not, notice, not, noticing that there are, there are things there that need to be improved for the paper to be fully understood. Right? The reason a good paper, when we read a good paper, the reason we think it's a good paper, it is mainly because we understand all the reasoning. From, from, from the beginning to the end of the paper, we understand the reasoning. 
when we read a, a good paper, we read it and we're not questioning every single word that the author, the, the author is saying. You know, we're not questioning, why did this guy use this, this methodology? The methodology has to fit well. Why did this guy decide on this objective? The author, again, should have included enough uh, context and justification information that you understand why that is important. Uh, what is the, the, you know, what is the meaning of the results that were obtained, right? Uh, you, you shouldn't be questioning everything. So when we read a, when we, we read a paper, we say, oh, this is a good paper. It's probably because the author was able to convince us about all the details that are in the paper. So we have to be uh, perfectionists in the sense of uh, shaping our, our paper so that it does not generate doubts in other readers, so that it, it just, so, so it doesn't make them question our, you know, our arguments or question our, sometimes they, they even question our data because the way we write makes the, the reader uncomfortable about, is, is was that data really well collected? Right? Uh, two weeks ago when we had Miguel Aguirre with us talking about um, quantitative methods, uh, I, 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 I had an intervention there at the beginning and I said, you know, it's almost like a teacher uh, preparing an exam. When we, we spend a lot of time beforehand preparing some good questions that we know exactly how uh, students should answer so that we, we, we have that feeling that they really understood the, the matter. Uh, when we spend a lot of time before, we need to spend less time later. When we, when we do a poor job, and, and I have to admit many times we prof professors and teachers, we have less time than we wished to prepare an exam and then we regret later because we say, well, this question, you know, now I realize after seeing the answers that my students are giving me, I realize that I should have uh, planned better my questions so that the, the answers that I collected helped me to, to, to get an, uh, a better understanding of the, of the overall situation. Right? So uh, uh, today we will focus a bit uh, on, on this topic of collecting the best possible data we can uh, this is, uh, of course, this is important in qualitative and in quantitative uh, research. In qualitative research, we many times have, we have more flexibility to adjust our tools as we go, because many times we're using, for example, interviews, and during an interview, we think of a question that we had not thought of before, and we include that in our repertory. Uh, we, that's a question that we we, uh, I mean, I mean, it came to our attention because of something that one of our interviewees said. But then we say, we, we think, oh, okay, I have already done two or three interviews before this one. Uh, I haven't asked that. Uh, I may have a chance of going back to those people and, and have a follow-up interview in which I include this question that now seems important. But at least I can, for the next interviewees, the next people that, that, that I talk to, I can already include this question or this matter in my, in my let's say, uh, script in, in things that I want to know from them. So qualitative uh, uh, research allows for more change as we go, although that does not mean that we shouldn't plan ahead because the, the, the better we plan ahead, the, the safer we are even to decide if we have to include new, 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 new questions as, as, as things progress. But for quantitative uh, studies, that is an absolutely must because if you ask a poor question, in your question in your questionnaire you will get answers that will be either biased or that will be simply trash and will make it difficult for you to 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 do anything uh, uh, with the results you get afterwards and of course when we're thinking about quantitative uh, research uh, we're always talking about hundreds or thousands of, of answers or, or people that, that will respond to your let's say a questionnaire for example so it's very difficult to go back to all of them and say look there was a question there that was flawed. Could you re-answer that question to me? I mean, it's already difficult to get people to, to help you the first time. If you have to admit that you did something wrong and you need them to help a second time, the, the probability of having uh, them, um, you know, keep supporting you with, 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 their, uh, with, with extra answers is, is very small. Uh, I want to give you a very uh, simple example of a way in which we we can sometimes bias people depending on what we ask them. 
Okay, I, I'm sending a link just for those of you who have names starting from G to Z. And I will send another link for those that have names starting from A to F. I'm sort of splitting the, the classroom in two groups here. Okay, so first uh, G to Z, you, to Z, you can already uh, get it from there. And uh, let me get the other link for those that are A to it's it's very quick uh, it's only I'm only asking you to I think it's only two questions but promise me that you're not going to see the the results for the other group right? for the, the questions for the other group okay and of course you, it's the idea is that you, you're not going to check on Google right it's 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 your guess right please uh, <laughs> this is important I want you to, to, to know what your impression is about these questions that I asked you don't, don't check it on Google because if you do that, of course, the purpose of our of our exercise here is spoiled. I'll have to show you the numbers here and uh, and then you tell me uh, if that's what you meant. Um, let me start with let me, well, let me just change scenes here so you see what I have on my screen. Uh, this is the question that I asked for uh, uh, for people in the group. Uh, that have their, their name starting from A to F. I asked him, uh, and, and this is the, the, for question two, I asked, what do you think the population of Turkey is in millions? I'm supposing that, uh, as I'm saying, in millions here, that this is probably 90 million, right? If that was not the intention of the person, please tell me. But I believe that was 90 million. So this would also be, oh, this would be 9 million then. And this would be 5 million. Is this all right? Otherwise, correct me. This would be 80 million. And this number here, I have no clue what the person, uh, maybe three. It would be 1 billion, 1.1 1. 1 billion. Is this it? Uh, j just tell me what, sorry. Uh, sorry, no, it's 1.1 1. 1 billion, so it would be more like. Is this it? Is this it, guys? Uh, I mean, you, you were the ones who, who, who wrote those numbers. So, did this guy here, uh, this person here, think of uh, 1 billion? Or otherwise, just correct me. Just tell me what the, the number was supposed to be for the second question. Okay, so don't worry. It's, it's just that the people that answered this, uh, I just want to, to know from the people that answered from A to F, I have here uh, five people that answered. I understand that this is 90 million. I understand that this is 9 or 5 million, I don't know. This is 80. This one seemed a little weird. Okay, so this was 9 million. Okay, this is 5, 5 million. This is 80 million. What is this supposed to be, whoever wrote that? No, 70, 70 is not here. So maybe you're the, the other group. Watch out. We're talking about the people that answered letters A to F. The other group is this one here. Let me see. And I have already changed here, but this was uh, a little clearer. Although, if you say it's 70, you say that this is 70 here. Okay, so, uh, all right, so maybe, so maybe this is not 700, this is 70. S start, start seeing one thing, uh, uh, and, and my, my, my bad here, when I wrote, what do you think the population of Turkey is in millions? I gave people the opportunity to, uh, of course, if they, if they paid very good attention, they would say, okay, Alex is asking in millions. So if I, if I write 22, it's going to be 22 millions. But this was not 22. This was, uh, people had already put, a, a, I think, a larger number here. I, I just figured, I had to figure it out. Do you understand that when I have to start figuring out, I'm taking guesses. What is the quality? What is the reliability of my study? I'm sorry, but uh, the results that I will show you here, will not have a lot of reliability because I don't trust because none of these numbers here is necessarily what you wrote. There were a lot, a lot, of, a lot of more zeros here behind and I assumed that if you had six zeros behind the number that was here, I still assume that someone is, is telling me that we're talking about 50 million and we're not talking about 50 trillion. But the number that the person wrote was 50 trillion. Can you see how, how complicated it is? A, a very simple thing like this is already causing this kind of problem. And first, here I I, I just asked uh, 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 five people to, to to answer this in each of the the of the two groups, right? Uh, 
Fancy if I had 500. I can easily solve this, or maybe I can solve this by sending the, the, the questions back to people and saying, all right, now understand that my question there had that in millions at the end. Uh, so would you, would you be okay re redoing the, the, the exercise? And people could, uh, I mean, this is just two questions, so maybe people were, were going to, to, to be nice and, and say, yes, we could. Uh, in fact, I'll ask you to do that, right? So go back to the same link and put the number now in millions, right? So it's, it's just uh, without, without the six zeros behind it, right? Just redo it uh, uh, so that uh, we, we check. Uh, and and I, I'm sure that now I have the number that you wanted to include. Okay, everyone, does it, do, do that again. Re-enter there in, in the same link that you had entered before and re-include the number the, the proper way. Thank you, Erika. Uh, I just want to very quickly see when I have, I have to have twice as, as many numbers as I had before. Has, has everyone already done it? I think uh, for the group from A to F, I still miss someone. For whatever reason, uh, I had at first I had for the the the, the, the group uh, from A to F that were doing population of Turkey uh, uh, dash A. I had five people answering before, and now I only have three. And for the other group, I had five people answering before, and now I have five again. So I suppose it's the same five. Uh, but for the first group, I, I still miss a couple of people, I believe. Is there anyone who's still answering it? Well, uh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I'm just trying to show you, and I promise that I didn't try to make this confusing, right? Uh, or messy, but at the same time, notice how my data collection was already messy. Let me go back here to, to this is the group of people uh, that were answering population of Turkey dash B, okay? Uh, of course, all the answers that I have here to the top from line two to line six were the, the previous answers. I should delete them. And the ones below here are the new answers. I should keep them. Uh, one weird thing, I, I am the researcher here, right? And I see that numbers changed. It's the same people answering the same questionnaire, but the numbers changed. Look, uh, I mean, I have, uh, let me see if I can just check this. Um, do I have a checking thing? Uh, all right, I have uh, 90 here, and I had 90 there. I have 70 here. Oh, sorry, my, my links are, oh, very bad. But anyway, you, you understand, and I have 70 here as well. I have, and then the other numbers, I can't see any match between I have 27, oh, okay, I have 27 here. This, this was the last one of the, from the previous. And I have 27 here. I don't know how a 22 turned into an 11 and a 50 turned into an 11. You know, where is my motivation now as a researcher about the quality of the data that I collected? See, because of a problem I had in my previous, in my first questionnaire, uh, I asked people to answer twice. The second time they answer, answers are different to the first, at least partially. So everything is a little weird. I, I lost my confidence in my, on my, my own research. Let me see the other group. Uh, just a second. Oh, hang on. Oh, sorry. I have to clear this. I had, uh, okay. Let's suppose that this 80 here is this guy that was already here. This 90, sorry, uh, it's not working very well, but anyway, is, is this same here? Look what happens to the other numbers. Uh, the 50 that I have now, understand that the, the numbers that I have down here were allegedly the same people that were answering up there. So how confident can I be as a, as a researcher of the answers I've got for my questionnaire the second time. Would you go on with, uh, you know, writing a paper based on, 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 on the answers that you collected? Do you think that this, the data that I have are good data? 
sorry, I, I would say I, I prefer to, you know, give up the research at this stage and say, sorry, I, I did it bad. I don't trust the results that I've got because at least considering that the same people answered up here, sorry, up here, I have to show you again the, um, the same people were the ones that were writing, that were answering up here. Okay, the, the, this, this line in, in, in orange was the last line of people who answered the first time. If I, if I, I, was, going to, I was expecting to have the same answers back there than I had down here. I had less people answering, okay, I, I could accept that and say, okay, some people got annoyed and they say, I'm not going to answer it twice, right? But at least I should see the same answers. I don't, I don't trust my own research, uh, the, the results of my own research. So why would I write a paper about it, about something that, that I don't trust myself? It's better to start from scratch, do something else, at least learn that I did, uh, that, that, that I did something poorly here and look here as well. Uh, I have these numbers here. Let me just take those arrows out because they're not helping. Uh, and those numbers should be reflected down here. Sorry, from here to here. I'm sorry. What's happening here? They should be reflected here, and they aren't. So, um, so we we have a pro I have a problem there. I, I I can I cannot go. And I would say if you felt in the same situation, I'd say stop the research. Stop it. Uh, think. Uh, uh, you know, you wasted your time, you wasted other people's time. And the, the bad thing is, you're not going to send them a third uh, link and say, look, I had a problem there, then you answered me and I didn't trust. Then let's try a third time, right? People are not going to be uh, happy about that. And they will not, uh, I mean, you, you, just, you, you just wasted your database. We have to be very careful and conscious about the people that we, we, we involve in our research. We have to be conscious about their time. We have to be conscious about... Um, the fact that they are helping us with our research, but uh, but they also expect that the research is carefully organized. And and I have to tell you what I plan to do here. You, you notice that I, I I hired column B right in in both uh, in, in, in in both in, in both um, surveys that I sent because my expectation would be. And now I don't even know if we should go any any, any further with that because of course. Uh, uh, my data already. I don't trust my data. But anyway, my expectation was that if I if I checked the the average of these answers here, I'm doing something that I, I said that I wouldn't do. Right? I don't trust my data any longer. But I'm still checking this. My that my 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 assumption with this research was if, if, that if I calculated the average here and the median, the median is uh, the difference between the, the, the average and the median is that the average is, well, is a calculation you sum all items and divide by the number of items, right? And the median is you get all the, the, the items that are, um, are high and, uh, and the ones that are low and, and you, you skip one at one side, you skip one at the other side and one at one side, and then you get the very central uh, number. Uh, notice that I'm doing this uh, only for, so this is the median, uh, I'm only doing for the, the second round here, right? So this is why I'm getting this. In fact, to make this a little clearer, I will even erase these lines here on top because those were the, the, the first collection. It's the same people. So I don't want that. I will just clean it. Uh, why didn't I, I... I didn't want to just delete it. I wanted to exclude those lines. Yeah. Okay. So I got here uh, an average of the answer here. For those of you that have a name starting from the letter G until the end of the alphabet, an average of 41 million, and the median was 27. Again, I'm, I'm doing something that I shouldn't do because I don't trust my data any longer. Right? But anyway, I'm doing it. Uh, and I'll go to the other group here. Unfortunately here, I only had three responses. I don't know what happened with my other respondents. I'll, I'll kill this here on the top because they were the first two round, right? Um, so I'll exclude them. And I will calculate the average <coughs> and the median. <coughs> uh, one problem uh, that people have when they use um, qu quantitative methods, the way I'm using here, and they have little data, not not many not many numbers to to calculate, is that sometimes when you say, "Well, the average was 70, 73, but you don't tell 
how many items, how many observations you had. People may have the idea that you, you, you surveyed hundreds or thousands of people. And many times we see very weak papers that are, are, very, uh, that are based on very uh, quantitative methodology, but the amount, the, the number of observations is very, very little. So if I only have 10 observations, I would say, why did you ask? Why did you write a questionnaire? Why, why, why did you send people a questionnaire? 10 people, you can easily talk to each one of them, and then you will also get a lot of qualitative data. So uh, think of quantitative data, quantitative analysis, when you, have, when you expect to have a large number of, of answers. But look, now I'll go back to, my, to what was my uh, assumption for this study. I had the assumption that the average of the population guessed by you, guessed by, by those people who, who filled in uh, the survey A, would be higher than the average of those that answered survey B. Well, it, it actually happened. It's a pity that my, my research, that I don't trust the data of my research any longer, right? But if I had, let's say, hundreds of people uh, answering my survey, uh, and if I had made sure that when I asked them that they, they wanted to, to write the number in millions, that, uh, that they did not, you know, include, or, or that some of them did not include the six zeros and others didn't, right? Uh, if, if, if I was sure about all of that, then maybe I, I could go back to my assumption and, 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 and do some study about it. And my study here would be about bias. Uh, the first question that I asked you in the questionnaire was a biasing question, was a question that led you to answer the second question uh, differently. And this is why I, hide it. I, I had it in black here, the first question. That for group B, I mean, for those of you who, who are, uh, who were in the group uh, with with names starting from from G to Z, uh, I asked you. The first question was, do you think the population is more uh, the population of Turkey is more or less than 30 million inhabitants? And look at the question that I asked the other group. Do you think the population of Turkey is more or less than 100 million inhabitants? Does, does that make a, a difference for a rational uh, respondent to change their answer to the second question simply because of this, the first question? What do you think? Rephrasing that. If I first ask you, do you think the population of Turkey is more or less than 30 million inhabitants? Or if my first question is, do you think the population of Turkey is more or less than 100 million inhabitants? Do you think that that affects somehow the answer you give to the other question? That is, what do you think the population of Turkey is? Yeah, Erika is, is, is sending me a positive sign saying, yeah, I, I believe it, it, it affects. So I would say we have to be very careful with the questions that we include in our questionnaire because one question may affect the answer to another question. Do we want that to happen? Of course not. We want to know what, what the, the, the respondent thinks. We don't want to, you know, to bias them. We don't want to, to, to distort the answer that they may give. Yeah, Erika is saying me that, uh, she's using the precise term that we use for that, is that it works as an anchoring uh, of, uh, of the respondent's response. The question is definitely in this in this case. Uh, well, not not the question. The set of questions uh, has a bias, and the researcher should be aware of that. So we have to plan better. Of course, again, notice that my 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 questions to you they were poorly planned in two ways. Right. First, because well, first because there was this intended uh, idea of biasing here. So so in that in that case, in this for, for our exercise here, that was intended. But at the same time. I was poor in not making sure that everyone, when I asked the population of Turkey in millions, that everyone would write a number that was, you know, uh, a number in millions, okay? Uh, how could I have solved that problem? The problem with respect to this uh, question, uh, the, the second question, uh, to make sure that people wrote numbers in millions. Well, what is reasonable from, uh, of course, if, 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 if the answer to my, quest, uh, to my, to my questions is, is a complete uh, illiterate person, they may say, I have no clue. 
and maybe that could be an, an alternative in your in your let's say in your survey you could give, you should always give people the chance of saying i don't know right uh, but in addition to that you could uh, include and considering that most of our questionnaires these days are electronic you could include some uh, checking of answers that at least uh, warn the respondents, right? I noticed here that you wrote uh, a, a number that has a lot of zeros behind it, let's say. Aren't those zeros things that you should have skipped considering that I'm asking already for the number in millions? I don't know, uh, it's sometimes we start making uh, the thing confusing, but so we have to think of a way of, of, of making things as simple as possible, right? Uh, and, I, and I think I've, I've given you enough examples here of how we, how we can spoil our own research, how we can make it be whatever result we get, it may not see, uh, uh, mean anything any longer because we ourselves don't trust it any longer. Okay, so any any questions, any any ideas, any about this exercise here? You understood that uh, there is always a risk that we bias the, the answers we get from, from, from our respondents by other questions or, or by anything that we we write in our questionnaire there is uh, always um it's a human thing uh people who answer our questionnaires they want to please us somehow they so there's always this chance that they are thinking what what answer would uh, make alex happy it's 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 curious it's uh but what will make uh, alex happy so the best questionnaire is that one that i do not give any hints about what would make me happy when I start uh, providing people with a lot of assumptions, of uh, my assumptions, and saying, look, I think that uh, uh, I, I, I'm doing this questionnaire because I want to check if, I, I don't know, um, whatever situation is happening, I'm already giving them hints of what my assumptions are. And they may try to answer the, the questionnaire in order to help me achieve the results that I, that I expect. But do I really ex expect to get the result that I that I foresee as, as the most probable not really the the researcher should always be someone who's open to you know open open to to to, to answers that even surprises we do have uh, of course uh, assumptions that result from from the literature review that we've we've done we do have assumptions that result from pre-work that we have we have already done we we, we we do there are things that we expect that will happen uh but if exactly the opposite happens that is also good for, for that, that's also good in fact maybe if if what happens is the opposite to what we we thought maybe we even have a better research because uh, we're probably uh, uh, sh uh, being able to discuss with our our um, academic community results that go against what we all thought to be the most probable uh, results that's the situations in which we find black swans when nobody believed that they existed you know popper i think i mentioned that in one of our early classes that popper uh, in in his way of thinking of the scientific methods uh, the introduction of that idea that we have to refute um, a hypothesis uh, in fact he was providing providing us with the, with tools so that we are able to see uh, black swans in the lake and that we are not always just um, getting the results that we expected for our research simply because we placed the questions or, or we, pro we, we, we prepared our tools to get those results. We do get what we plan to get many times, but uh, that may not be the, the best uh, result for, for, for our research. Okay? So be aware of that. All right. Uh, well, having, having uh, done this uh, uh, little exercise with you, I would like to... Uh, show uh, maybe some of you uh, are familiar with uh, ways of writing a, a form maybe others aren't I want to do this very quickly here uh, to help those who have never prepared a form to collect data uh, there are some tools uh, there, there are some tools that are very uh, that are more professional for that for example many universities provide their students with access to Qualtrics or to SurveyMonkey I don't know if you have already used those uh, tools, uh, but uh, there is one uh, cheap and, 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 and simple tool for us to use that is Google Forms. Right? It's not the best, 
but it provides us with a good, easy to to prepare forms that we can use in in, in, in research, and it's uh, it's free to use. Okay. So I, what I'll do here, I will get into my Google Drive. I guess these days everyone has a, an account in, in, in Google Drive, so it's no problem for someone to to do that. And and basically what I'll do, many people use uh, this to write to, to to include here a document. And I'm sorry, my uh, my my of course my, all my Google and, and all my tools here are in Portuguese. So, uh, but you understand, it's, it's the interface is exactly the same. So I could open a Google sh a Google Doc, a Google spreadsheet, and there's here a Google form, right? Um, I will simply open, create a, a form here very quickly. Uh, my idea for this class was to use that form in which I asked you to include the the topic that you want to to, to study to, to to develop in your paper, and I also asked you to include some methodology and everything. But I noticed that I still only have some seven or eight answers there, um, and therefore uh, I want to make sure that I have uh, I include I create here a questionnaire that everyone can very quickly answer. So we are going to ask uh, I'm going to ask you a very uh, very simple questions, right? This I, I mean I, I can write the, the 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 title that I want here. I'll, I'll just uh, it's going to be knowing you a little better that's it this is the name of my, my questionnaire i will include a few questions here notice uh, google forms allows me to to have use several different types of questions uh the, the the first one that i will ask is your name uh, what is your name um and then this could be yes notice that uh, it's smart enough to already understand that well, Google does its miracle, right? It's already suggesting that this is going to be a short answer here. Uh, I, I, of course, I have other options, uh, but this is definitely not going to be a, a multiple choice. So I'll leave it as a short answer. This is going to be compulsory, right? Uh, compulsory here. Uh, and uh, I will go into another question. I can simply, maybe if I come here, add another question. I'll ask a second question. Um, you know one thing that I, I usually want uh, want to have in, in, in large database uh, of people that I want to contact through through a survey, I I, I usually wish to have to, to know their gender. You know why? That, that's important in Portuguese and Spanish. That is not as important in English. But in Portuguese or Spanish, when we're writing someone a message, we write we write estimado or estimado Antonio. Uh, or estimada Patricia, and that and, and, and the most horrible thing when you you, you want to get a, a, a direct contact with someone, and you, you you use one of those forms like estimado, and then in between brackets a, like to say estim. I don't know if I'm talking to Antonio or Patricia, so estimado a Antonio Patricia. So Portuguese and Spanish are are need that English doesn't. So it's easier to do to to to, to send surveys in a in a direct way in which you're talking to the person and you want to know that uh, that you're talking directly to that to to, to to them and not to you know to a do you want the, the receiver of your your questionnaire to have the feeling that you're writing directly to them and not to a bunch of people right so writing estimado and then in, in brackets uh, like something like that doesn't make it personal right uh, we, we want to 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 write it uh, uh, in a way that people feel that we're talking to them. So I usually, if I'm collecting data somehow, I prefer to have also a question of gender. Uh, if I don't have that, what I do, even if I have a, a, a let's say, a spreadsheet with data on 5,000 people that I want to send emails to and, and, and ask them for, for their cooperation with, with, uh, with my survey, I will go through each name and try to determine if it's a he or a she I'll show you that a little later because today I'm here to talk about my tricks, right? To to make the communication with uh, those who participate in my research closer, right? So gender for me is important. So I'll include uh, gender here. Notice that it already uh, thought about gender. It's a multiple option. Um, in fact, I, I would like uh, for me it would be great if it was binary in the way I want to to say if I'm going to write estimado or estimada. But anyway, I'll, I'll write here uh, male, uh, female. 
and other maybe I don't know uh, j j because this will give me a hint that this is important for me to, to have in my, my question all right uh, what else uh, will I ask here uh, I'll, I'll make this compulsory as well I mean I've given people enough options here I believe that uh, nobody will find it difficult to 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 in, to fi find where to include themselves uh, then I will include <coughs> another question and I, I use this a lot when I have to ask people for example when I'm, I'm when, when I'm preparing uh, when I'm organizing a conference like Isla that I have organized myself many times and I have hundreds of reviewers that I want to ask uh, for help so that they help review the papers that are submitted to the to the to the journal I could write one of those very generic emails to them saying estimado a uh, and then, then include their name there uh, and then they would say yeah this this guy doesn't know who, even who I am it's it's a database right they got this he got this information from the database and now he's asking me to work for free come on I'll ignore it but instead of doing that I went to to, to uh, many times when I'm, I'm building my database uh, on, on, on whatever topic I want to investigate I want to, to know a little more uh, I, what I do with those with respect to those guys I want to know what their fields of um, expertise or interest are because then I w when I send them a paper to review I will try and send a paper to review exactly in, the, in their specialty in the area that they, 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 they are specialists or if I'm not doing that at least I can tell them, you know, I am aware that you are a specialist in this field and then I'm sending you a paper that is from a slightly different field, but I would still, uh, it would be st still a great uh, help if you could, uh, if you could do that review for us. It makes it much easier for the people to accept than if they receive just some email that seems to be um, spam sent by someone they, that they either don't know or if, even if they know, they, they think, well, this guy just sent this to hundreds of people. It's it's much easier to get their acceptance to do whatever you want if you are more precise. So I will ask a third question here to you. Uh, that is your uh, field of research. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, and this uh, this will depend, on again, on, on, on how narrow this question an error of mine is if I if I already know that everyone I'm talking to are people let's say that are information systems researchers and then I will just I, I may want to, to check if what field within or what, what, what topic within I, I could even go here for a multiple choice uh, set of alternatives and give them if, 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 if it's none of them uh, I'll, they'll have the, the opportunity of uh, writing other and then they will include what it is right uh, but let's say at this stage, uh, I will, I prefer to, to keep this as an, uh, a short answer again. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'll make this uh, compulsory. I, I don't remember if I did this for the previous one, but I, yeah, I, I made it compulsory. So I have a, a set of questions here. Um, and let, let me just, uh, sometimes we, of course, there, there are many other Gun. This one is below. I'll put below the other one. This has to be the last one. I don't know what happened here. This one has to go before. Sometimes, yeah, it's see, it's a little messy, but it's there. Uh, and I have a last question. Uh, I, I just just want to explore a few of the, the possibilities here. So we have the short answer. We have a paragraph answer. Sometimes people are doing some qualitative research based on. <clears throat> on surveys, right? You, you you send a survey, so it's still a questionnaire, but it's a questionnaire where people will write a lot of uh, paragraph answers, and then you will, will use later some sort of uh, content analysis or some 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 more qualitative uh, sort of methodology to analyze those data because they are not simply uh, multiple choice alternatives, right? Um, but anyway, we have a, a paragraph, we have the multiple choice, we have selection boxes. What is the difference between multiple choice and, and selection boxes? Do you know that? I think selection box, uh, you can choose one. Uh, More than one option. Yeah. Precisely. That's it. Uh, multiple, cho uh, multiple choice uh, question only allows one possible answer. So if you if you decided that uh, you will go with 
option. The first option, it's that one. You cannot include a second one. With selection boxes, uh, you can you can tick several of them. So many times, it's it's useful to have questions in which we provide people with the possibility of saying, well, this is okay, but I also think that this is okay and this is okay. So it depends on the kind of research that you're doing, right? Uh, I don't know how, how this would be in, in English. Probably this is a uh, it's a drop down or uh, so, so sort of you, you click on, on, on the link and then it will show you a few alternatives. It's pretty much like I would say uh, a multiple choice because there's going to be a list of alternatives there. Maybe you just want to visually you want your form to look a little different. Notice we even have the possibility of asking people to upload files. It, it may be interesting for someone doing whatever sort of research. Then you have scales. Uh, linear, and linear scale is, uh, let, let's try to have a linear scale um, here for, for a question. It says, uh, it goes from one, uh, one to, uh, here, one, from one to five, but it could be one, uh, one to, let, let's say, I can include whatever, one to seven. It depends, this is almost like a Likert scale, right, uh, that people use, Likert scale. Uh, I'll, I'll include one, one to seven. Uh, my question is, uh, how happy are you today in a scale from one to seven right and then and then the answer there is going to be uh people will, will, will be able to write on a scale scale that is a scale like that no yeah it is okay what's the problem with this question of mine <clears throat> See, we have to be very conscious of, of the question that we are asking because people may have may find it difficult to interpret what we're saying. What is the problem with the question, how happy are you today in a scale from 1 to 7? Antonio. The problem is, the problem is, is that uh, I don't have for time and uh, a number for evaluating these questions. It's uh, subjective. Well, it, I mean, it's still, the fact of being subjective uh, Antonio is not is not the main problem here because we can still we are we are sort of quantitative in our mind we 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 we, we still can say I, I remember that many times I go to, to the doctor to the medical doctor and uh, and he he asked me in a scale from one to five uh, how good are you feeling and then I have to tell him it depends feel, yeah go on go on Antonio I, I, I feel that the question is about uh, behavior. Yeah, it's a sense. You're, you're sensing. It's a perception question. Uh, many people. The, the more quantitative you are, the less you like perception questions. But it, 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 does it tell? Let's say if, if my medical doctor, when I get there, and I ask, and, and he asks me, uh, in a scale from one to seven, how are you feeling today? Uh, do you do you agree with me that if I say one or seven, it may be uh, he, he may already have an impression if I'm if I'm feeling well or bad. Right. So in that sense, it's a perception. It has the problems of, you know, perception scales have a problem because, well, first you're, you have a scale. What is the difference between one and two and between two and three? Is, is, it, is it linear or not? It's all, it, there's a, a lot of issues there already. But the main issue here is, and this is, I always ask my doctor when, when I go there and he says, well, how, how are you feeling today in a scale from one to, to seven or one, one to five or whatever? I say, well, it depends. First, you have to tell me if one is great, and seven is very bad, or the opposite, right? So, I see a lot of people using scales, and they don't they, they don't know uh, they, they don't say uh, what is good and what is bad. So you always you would always have to say uh, how happy are, are you today in a scale from one to seven, and and maybe you have to, to clear it out considering that uh, one equals very happy, and seven equals very unhappy <laughs> okay <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll call it a consider consider one equals very happy uh, and seven very unhappy and I'll put this question mark here I think this is fair I, I, again with all the problems that uh, Antonio has told us of uh, you know we are measuring perception. What does that mean? Right? Uh, 
it's just perception. But anyway, uh, I would say that there is a lot that we can learn from perceptions as well. But at least let, let's, let's make sure that the, the, the scale points in a, we know in which direction we are pointing the, the scale, okay? I'm just including this so that we explore this possibility and you'll see that in the result. I will include another question here, still. Uh, and, uh, and and just, just for us to play a little bit with the types of scales, I will use uh, this multiple choice uh, grade. I, I find this interesting because uh, it allows us to, to have several uh, lines and several columns uh, and then people, maybe I could have a ranking thing here. Rank, uh, rank uh, from, let me see if this is going to be a good question. Uh, now this, this is, uh, this is actually, uh, may, maybe like this, uh, tell, as your level of agreement with the following questions. Tell us, uh, okay. And then what I'll do here is for each one of the lines, I would say, well, today, uh, today is a great day. Uh, or today, Let, let's go again with a, uh, I feel very happy. This is what one question I, I could have, right? <clears throat> uh, today, I have a lot of work to do. Uh, following, following, so it's not following questions, following statements, right? It's agreement by following statements. Um, uh, today I will fill out Alex's question, uh, a form on my, um, on my, uh, uh, objective and methodology for my paper. A lot of you haven't yet, so I'll just, just see how. Uh, and then what I have here in the columns, I could have uh, uh, the, uh, columns, for example, completely, completely agree. A second one could be agree. A third could be neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree. Okay. Uh, all right. I have three questions here. But I think this will work. Well, well. Let, let's start criticizing this. Uh, I, I'll leave it the way it is. Right. It's. It's again. It's. It's. It's going to be a. a the, the only. The only reason we're we're doing this is to explore a little bit the tool, right? So and to show how easy it is to set um, a questionnaire using Google Forms. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it like this. But what is the problem with a with a statement like this? Today I feel very happy and asking people to completely agree to, to strongly disagree. What are they agreeing with? Are they agreeing with uh, the happy or with the very? Notice we're, we check if people are happy and then at the same time we, we put something that already provides intensity. So uh, what, what are, what are really pe people really answering? And, and I have to agree with Antonio that many times perceptions may already be vague and when we start uh, asking people about perceptions about something that is already sort of uh, qualified by a by some other some other uh, word here, talking about intensity, we, we never know if people are agreeing with the intensity or with the with the characteristic that we're trying to measure, right? So I when I look at the questionnaires like this and I start answering, I have the feeling that uh, the, the the sorry the the the, the, the researcher is bringing garbage in to their research. There is going to be garbage out as well, and they will be very pleased because they will build some beautiful graphs and things. But does that mean anything, right? Uh, today I feel very happy. If I ask today I feel happy, I think uh, we, we're at least measuring something. 
one, one thing, right? If I ask today, I feel very happy. Uh, today I have a lot of work to do. Right? It's a lot of work. Um, what am I measuring here? Am I measuring the a lot of part of the, the, the statement or the the, 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 the the work itself? So I, I don't have a, 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 a complete and definitive answer to the best way of doing these things, but we just have to know if people are writing, if, if people are answering a questionnaire like this, what are they really uh, answering? Uh, and if I don't know what, or if I understand that different people may perceive a question differently, then it's already not a very good questionnaire. Right? Remember, we have to spend a lot of time challenging our questionnaire, uh, uh, being the, 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 the devil's advocates with respect to it, and checking other, different people would understand this differently. Asking people that we know, our colleagues, maybe there are colleagues here in this, in, the, in this group, if you had to answer this, what, what, what problems do you see here? Because when other people see problems, then you start solving them before you send your questionnaire to those 100 or 200 people that you want to, to answer. Because if you send your, your questionnaire and it has poor questions, you're not going to be able to resend it later, right? And say, sorry, it was mistaken. Now, now, it's, now it's good. Remember what happened with my, my population of Turkey uh, example here. Okay? Uh, after you messed up with things, it's very difficult, if not impo uh, impossible, to correct. But again, we'll leave these questions the way they are because we are not interested in the quality of the answers. I just want to explore a few of the, the possibilities of this uh, surveys here with you, right? Uh, and I will still include, this is also going to be uh, a compulsory question. What is the risk of making all my questions compulsory? If someone doesn't want to answer a specific question, they may give up answering the whole questionnaire. Right? So sometimes we have to realize how important the question is, or the questions are, to make sure what we make uh, um, uh, compulsory and what we allow people to skip if they, if they wish. Uh, <clears throat> let me include one last question, because I want you to, to answer, and then we, we want to do the next stage, which is even more important, that is sending uh, people um, uh, an invitation to, to be part of the questionnaire. Right? Uh, just... Uh, Maybe just this. Uh, maybe we could use this selection box um, grade as well, but it, it, it works pretty much like the the, the, the multiple choice one. Let, let's keep the way it is, uh, so so that our, our questionnaire is not that big. So we do have a questionnaire here. <coughs> <coughs> what is my next step uh, to be, be, before I, I get answers? What, what should I do next before sending it to, to those who will be my, uh, uh, well, the, the, the respondents? I, 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 I could check it with a few friends. I could send to a, a colleague and ask, have a look at this, answer it to me, check if all questions are clear, check if I'm not forcing you to write, to, to answer in a specific way, check if there are no biases uh, that I, I'm not, you know, uh, causing some um, distortion in the, in the answers. And then I, I hear there, there are, there are uh, in, in, in many situations, we, we do two things. We, 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 we first do a pretest. A pretest will be exactly that, like asking people to, to just comment on, 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 on the, the questionnaire that we've we built. And, uh, and then after that, we, we still do a pilot test. What is the difference between a pre-test and a pilot test? The pilot test, many times, we already do with people that are part of the, the of, of our population or, or, or at least of our sample, right? We may later decide if we're going to, to use the pilot test as part of the, the test, if sorry, as part of the research, if we do not have to make any radical changes to to the to the research tool, but at least we uh, we try the the um, the questionnaire on a group that is more similar to the, the, those who, who you want to answer your questionnaire than your colleagues, than, your, than, than the other doctoral students or the, the other professors or the other master students in your group. Remember, we are all sort of a different bunch. We are already, we, we already have this mindset of uh, participating in, in, in research or at least building research. So it, it's, it, uh, the way we understand this is different to the whole population. So you, all, you should also do some pilot tests, tests with a small percentage of your respondents 
Because if there is a problem that is detected in this phase of your study, you can still make the, change, the necessary changes and you have not uh, lost the whole database. Because if you send a, a questionnaire that has problems to the whole database, there's nothing that you can do afterwards, only being sorry. Uh, Patricia, you had a question? Yeah. Both are very important. The pretest, in, in which you're testing with other people that are close to you, that understand how to build questionnaires, that are that, that understand how to build a tool, uh, and that are and that could be critical and say, look here, over here, this question, what kind of answer do you expect uh, to have, and everything. So this is a pretest, and then so this is important. And another important uh, uh, aspect is the pilot test. The pilot test is not with your friends any longer. It's not with specialists, researchers. It is with the, the people that you plan to, to have your question answered by, okay? Uh, and you also do with a, 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 small, a small part of your data set so that you're not, you do not waste your data set if you have to make changes. If you notice that there are still problems that you were not able to capture by the pretest, you can still make these adjustments after a pilot test. Uh, and, and, and Well, having said that, we are not going to do any pre-test here and we're not going to do any pilot test. I will send this straight to you. And let me just get here the, no, what's this now? This, uh, what I want to do is just get a link, copy this link. I'll send it to you. Well, one thing, uh, see, I, I had my questions uh, here in the, in the form and then, then I, I can see the responses here. This, this panel here in, in, in in Google Forms already gives me for some, it already gives me an idea of, for example, gender, it already shows uh, as a graph because remember it was gender was a, a multiple choice question. So it already shows a quick graph here. Uh, the, the field of research, uh, remember this, this was, each one could uh, have a different uh, set there. How happy you are today, uh, weren't very happy. We, we, we do have some people that are very unhappy. I hope it's not us that are making them uh, unhappy. Uh, but and, and hopefully that, that that they will bring you reasons to be happier later on. Uh, notice a level of agreement with the following statements. Uh, I had three questions. Uh, today I feel happy. Some people okay. It's, uh, not, none was neutral. Today I have a lot of work to do. Uh, it seems that a lot of people agree with that. Today I will feel wow. This is good. Thank you very much. Well, uh, so it means that there, there will be people that haven't answered yet my, my it's, it's, remember, it's not this form here that you just answered. It's, uh, it's the form about the objective and the, and the methodology that you're going to use in your paper. Um, okay, it, it provides us with some uh, quick uh, graphs and ideas here, which is helpful. But I really think that for a researcher, what matters is getting that in the form of a spreadsheet. So I'll click in this button here. Uh, and I will create a new spreadsheet uh, for it, and it will show. <coughs> it will show here. Okay. Uh, notice that it always tells me the the time. Uh, this this is something that we don't even ask, but it's there. And then we have uh, uh, the name, uh, gender, field of research, how happy you are. Notice, remember, this is this was a, a linear scale. Uh, so we have here the. Um, your level of agreements with, and, and then here we have the three, notice that for each one of those three questions that we included in the <coughs> in that scale, it, it, it provides us with one column here for each one of them. Tell us your level of agreement with uh, today I'm feeling happy. So this is the level of agreement. Uh, and then we have level of agreement with uh, today I have a lot of work to do. And the, the, the level of agreement with uh, I will fill in Alex's form later on. Okay. Uh, anyway, notice that uh, it's an easy way of collecting data. It will be organized in a spreadsheet, and then uh, and then what? Uh, this could be. I mean, we did this uh, here with uh, with uh, well, only eight people answered so far, but maybe some 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 will still answer. Notice that we have as as with any uh, as with any uh, data collection. Uh, scheme that we have, we will have to to, 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 to check the, the data that, that we receive. For example, here, uh, your field of research, 
Rogério wrote, yes. Yes is not a possible answer for this, right? Uh, so we'll have to check later. Uh, and, 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 and if this was, let's say, the pilot test, and I saw a lot of people writing yes here or no, I would say uh, maybe my, my question was not clear enough because people are answering something that, remember, that told you the importance of having the pilot test to make sure that people are answering things in, an, in a way that you expect at least as a possible. So yes was not an expected uh, answer for this question, which means that either uh, the respondent uh, was doing something else and, 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 and didn't pay precise attention to what he was doing there, uh, or for whatever reason, my question was confusing. Again, if I have a lot of yes and no's in this column, I would say, gee, thank God, this is still the pilot test. I will go back to my questions, try to understand, maybe I'll rephrase it to make it clear. Okay. What we will do now, uh, I told you that uh, one, of course, what, what we did uh, up to now with, the, with our form was to, coll to collect data, but we're collecting data from people that we have already been able to reach out to. You, 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 you provided me with this data because you are in this class, right? Uh, but if you're going to send people that you don't know or people that you see very, uh, that you don't see often, if you, if you want them to answer your questionnaire, a questionnaire that will take 10 minutes of their lives, uh, you want them to feel that they are special in, uh, for, for your research. You don't want them to feel just someone else in a database, right? So what I will try to do now is I will try, uh, I will try to, to write an email to you making you feel special about some other research data based on the information that I have on this database here. Okay. So what I will do here, I will cut and paste the information. I, 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 I don't care much for the, the time here, for, for the, the time you answer. I'll just include these questions here um, to these other questions. I'll just cut and paste, Control C, and I will take them to an Excel spreadsheet, and I will control V them here. Hopefully it will work. Yes, it's there. Uh, because, uh, uh, and, and why I'm doing this on, on Excel and, and, and Word? Because the, there, are, there are a few options of using uh, Google, Google Spreadsheets. May, uh, you, you can use Google Spreadsheets to generate a, a, a mail merge from there. But I personally prefer to do it from Word and Excel. I've been doing that since the 90s, so I know it better. Sometimes I use uh, Google Drive to do that, but I, I find that the tools there are not that easy to, to use. What I'll do here very quickly is I'll go through my... Uh, let me just change this here so that it doesn't take so long. I want to just make sure that this... Okay, so uh, my first line here is my... It is, it is my, sorry, my first line is my data names. Uh, let me see if I can think here in data. Uh, in view, in view, I think I can. Uh, there's some place where I can freeze the first line. Can't find the freezing freeze. Maybe, uh, maybe I can just come here and click the right button. No. Does anyone remember where I freeze a, a, a line in in Excel? Uh, Sometimes I find it. Oh, here, uh, freeze panels. Okay, so I'll just freeze, freeze the superior line so that I can go down, uh, up and down here, and my first line will be there. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I have the names of, of my respondents. If I'm thinking about writing them an email, will I write an email, dear Erica Maria Menezes? Probably not, right? So I'll include another uh, field here the line so I include a column uh, no. sorry hang on what I'll do here is I'll include a column insert yeah and I'll, I'll insert a, 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 a column here first name I I like I personally like to to talk to people by their first names when I'm sending them emails you probably most of you have already received emails from me at one stage or another I'm, I'm very informal of course if you're a more formal person that that may be instead of getting the first name you may prefer their surname uh, because you're going to write uh, an email like dear dr menezes or dear uh, uh, but i as I, i'm probably my style is i'm going to, to, to write dear erica so i need her first name uh, of course in this case here we only have 
uh, eight people, I could very easily come here and write their first names. Uh, but if instead of uh, eight, I had 800 or 8,000, I probably have to use one of uh, Excel tools here. Excel allows me to, uh, and, and I'll have to do this in, in my Excel is in Portuguese. Uh, in English, you have uh, um, uh, functions that do exactly the same thing. Uh, what I'll do here is I will do, uh, I, I will do, esquerda means left. So I'll do left. I want to get the left, left part of the, the cell to the side, left of this gear. Okay, so it's if it was English, if your if your if your Excel is in English, it would be left here. I don't know if in 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 Spanish maybe izquierda uh, or something like that. What I'm trying to, to do is well, this first line, uh, the, the first column here, has the name of the person I want to get, the, the part that is more to the left, uh, and uh, how many characters I want. Uh, I will localize here in, in English. I think it's fine. Fi find. Uh, localizar. Uh, the, what I want to look for is uh, the space because I, the space between Erica and Maria. That's where I want it to, to stop. Uh, and where do, do I want to find that? In that cell. Uh, and I think this is it. And of course, uh, uh, if I'm going to, to get uh, from from the name, from Erica's, Erica Maria Menezes, from, from that whole string, I want only to get the Erica. I will find the, 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 the place where there is a blank space uh, and that should be the last, in fact, one character before that should be the last, so I'll put a minus one here. And this is, yeah, it works. You, you don't have to worry about this. I, I do this uh, very often, but uh, it's basically, uh, I asked you to, to, to bring, uh, to, to, to convert that name into, and then the, the thing I, I can do, I, I can copy this down and it didn't work. Why? I don't know. Uh, what happened here? Maybe I, should I just go like that? Ah, yeah, I know what happens here. Uh, many of you, when I, <coughs> in many cases, people have already included in this first column <coughs> just their first names. So that's why I'm getting uh, an error here in this, uh, because because of that. Uh, I could I could uh, uh, get rid of the error by. Uh, maybe I could check if, it, if there's an error. Uh, I, 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 I could check if there is a, well, include here another function too, but, but I don't want to make this a, a more sophisticated than uh, more. Uh, in this case, I would just, uh, th th there are many that wrote, because I, not, notice my question, I asked, what is your name, right? I could have asked, what is your full name? Right, and then I, then I wouldn't have this, this uh, sort of problem here, okay? But in this case, very, and notice uh, this is this is the reasons why when you have a database you 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 want to be very careful about building it to to, to make it easier to, to deal with it afterwards. Um, let me see if I, if I can very quickly here. Uh, the problem is that if I can do if uh, it's just a, no, it, it wouldn't be if it has to be in, in Portuguese. Yeah, I, I will not, I will not, if, if I had 700 uh, uh, names here or, or 7,000, I would deal with a, a little bit with the Excel to figure out how to solve this. In this case, I'll just write here, right? It's, it's easier for me to simply go. Besides, look, when someone wrote Flavio with, uh, with uh, not, not capitalizing, I want to make sure that I capitalize, right? Because I'm writing, uh, so Antonio's right, Marisa, uh, Rogério. Here in Brazil, we have well, Flavio, Flavio did it twice. I don't know what, what happened here. But anyway, uh, I noticed that Flavio is repeated here. It was, uh, so I'll just exclude this last one. Yeah, I'm sorry. No worries, no worries. See, there is, uh, when we have a database, we will have to spend some time cleaning up and, and, and checking. For example, I could come here and uh, organize this. For example, uh, if I come here by data, I could classify this somehow. Uh, by classify by by the, the by, by by what's your name right uh, so that will include it in in alphabetical order and then you go through and check if there are repetitions you don't want to send three three emails to a person simply because they appear three times in our database again we have to be very when we're doing research we have to be very perfectionist in, in what we do we have to try and clean our 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 database right uh, we want to make sure that uh, we have 
the information that we have there is right and we don't want to, to, to I mean, we, we have to do all the work so that our respondents simply has to answer our questionnaire and, and feel that they're doing something that, that's going to be helpful. One of the problems with poor questionnaires is that people start answering them and then they say, you know, this guy is never going to be able to make good sense of what of my answers because I don't even understand the questions. So that's a problem, you know, uh, and, and people will may, many times will stop answering in the middle. And in fact, those that stop answering in the middle because they think that you did a poor job, they're probably giving you, uh, they're probably helping you because otherwise they could just say, I'll, I'll answer anything here. Uh, the questionnaire is so bad that tough luck. I hope that they, they make any sense of it. And, and there's no sense that you can make out of garbage. So we have to be careful about preparing our, our data. But in this case here, we're only going to use this data here for uh, as, as, as being a way to contact these people. So what I will do now, I already have uh, uh, the fields here organized. I know there are fields of research here. <coughs> this yes doesn't help much, right? So uh, maybe, maybe if I have a chance while I'm still cleaning up things, I will ask. Uh, I noticed that I have this I think I, I may have a chance of writing uh, of figuring talking to the person and knowing so in this case for example I know that Rogério is studying collective intelligence I can include it here but if I didn't have that information maybe it would be something that I would uh, have to consider in preparing my my invitation email all right I have done this uh, what, what I'll do now I will save this file um, this is save as um, I will include it somewhere here. Very. Let me just find a place where I can. Uh, I'll just include it in the downloads here, uh, and this is going to be called uh, my data. My what I call uh, possible uh, respondent. Potential respondents is probably better, right? Potential. These are people that I believe that could answer my my questionnaire or that, that I could call and invite for an interview or whatever. Okay, save that. And now what I'll do is I will go to words. And, and in words I will, and again I apologize for my word being in Portuguese, but I can assure you that if you watch this later and if you have your word in Spanish, and these things are sort of in the same place, uh, there is this, this possibility here for correspondence. Uh, I do think that in, in English it's also a correspondence and we have here an option to select the participants of a mail merge. Uh, I think in, in Spanish you also say mala, dire mala direta for mail merge. Do you know that? Do, do you know what I mean by mail merge or, or by mala direta? No? No problem? You see? No, Alexander, no. No problem. So, but th this, is, this, this is going to be... If you don't know what, what mail merge is, and if you don't know what mala direta is in, in Portuguese, I, I, I believe it's probably the same word in Spanish, but maybe not. Uh, this will seem like magic. So pay attention. What I'll do is I, I come to correspondence here. I select the the uh, I'm going to sorry I'm going to start my my mail merge. Uh, I I think uh, yeah uh, I'll start my mail merge and I will come here to the assistant because well because Windows and, and, and Microsoft provide us with assistance to support us and we don't have to remember everything. I'll just come here to this assistant of mail merge step by step. What I will do, I will start planning the email that I went to send people. And this is where I was. Uh, I'll probably write dear and, and the name of the person, but I will do that in Portuguese or Spanish. Right? Simply because in our languages, we don't know if we're going to write an A or an O here, right? And then people usually go like that. They, they write, uh, uh, they usually write even this way. I don't know if that's what happens in Spanish as well, when you're going to, to write and, and then include the name of the is that is that the way you do it in Spanish? To, when you, you don't know the, if you're talking to, to a male or a female, is that how you go? Okay. So, but we, but we know who we are talking to because we have in our database, we know if the person is a he or a she so what we will do is we will include here, remember, we're, we're, what we'll be writing is one email or one letter to each one of those people individually, but we will do it in an automatic way here. So uh, it's going to be, uh, let me keep this like, like that for now. Uh, uh, now. Now I'll include the, the, the name of the person. Uh, I, 
uh, I will okay so so I'll have to include the name of the person but for that I have to to create a link between words and Excel where my database is right so this is the next step down here uh, the next step is uh, where is it uh, select the the uh, people that will be that will be receiving my 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 message so I'll select them and then it says here you can uh, use an existing list uh, you can select from Outlook uh, I will check I will use an existing list here <clears throat> and I will find that one that is there in our where did I put it in the downloads right downloads oh where is it potential respondents okay so I'll, I'll simply click on potential on, on, on that link uh, sorry on the on the file that I want to be and when I do that it is asking me if that that's the the spreadsheet that I want to select sure uh, notice what will happen now it already should see it's already showing me here uh, that there's a list it has all these people Antonio Erika Flavio is this is this the list and I just say okay and after I do that now I have the possibility of I have estimado a and I will include a merging field. What, what does that mean? I want to include the, first, the person's name right after estimado, whatever. Uh, what field will I use from, from all of this here? What's your name or first name? If you are informal people like me, you're going to use first name. Right? So what, what I'm saying is estimado, first name, uh, I wish the rest is going to be in English, right? But I wish, uh, of course, it would you would write in your own language. But I wish you you could dedicate a few minutes of your life to helping me with my research. I, I like to write very personal uh, <coughs> personal letters, even to people that I don't know well. Because it is a connection, right? When, when you say, look, I'm by, but, but it depends on the style of each person. But anyway, uh, uh, I'll say here, I know you are interested in, remember, I have in, in, my, in my Excel file, I have the, the field of study that the person is. So I'll come here again to the insert field. And I know that your field of research. I know that you're interested in your field of research. This is precisely what I am studying. And your opinion dash contribution would be very uh, or maybe uh, uh, this is or 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 maybe it, it, uh, Maybe we could make uh, changes here because, of course, there are, there are people, depending on the, in our database, if it's a database uh, um, where, where, where all the fields are, are, are very close to ours, we can go like that. Or maybe I could, I could go a little more sophisticated here. I'll start sophisticating this estimado, estimada here. Uh, instead of doing like this, what I will do is I will kill this and I will include an A or, or an O depending on the gender. Okay. So I will include here, look, there's this rules that I, I can include here. Alexander, yeah. it's not, it's, it's not, it's not uh, more simple to use there and add the first name of the, the participants. Or the... It's not more important to use what, Antonio? Sorry. Uh, it's, not, it's not more simple to use uh, the, the, the word there. there. Um, Dear. Yes, yes, of course. In if you're writing in English, it's more simple, it's more simple. Yeah, it, it, but but are you going to do your if your research is collecting information in, in uh, from people in Panama, are you going to do that in, in 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 English? Probably not, right? It depends. It depends. It depends on who you're talking to, right? Uh, what I'm saying, I, I wrote the, the rest here in, in English simply because we are an international bunch here. The class is in English, but of course, you're not going to write something in Spanish and the rest in English, right? I'm, I'm, I only wanted to show you that we can be a little more sophisticated 
And even if we are using our own languages, like Portuguese or Spanish, uh, we have this trick. Look what I'm doing here. Estimado, and what I'll do, I'll include a, a rule, and this rule is going to be an if-then-else. Right? If gender equal to female, insert text A. Otherwise, insert O. Does that make sense? And then it's going to write either an O or an A, depending if we're talking about, uh, about Erica or if we're talking about Flavio or Antonio or Donna and so on and so on and so forth. Okay. In fact, we can already see this. Uh, look here that I can visualize the results. So notice that instead of seeing here, I see the fields. See? If I come here and show like that, I see the name of the person. The first, the first person in, in my database is Antonio. So it's saying, Estimado Antonio. Uh, I could put you going in. Uh, notice here, I know you're, you're interested in network computer. Uh, probably I, I would have to have polished a little bit my, my data set again. And uh, I know you're interested in maybe included network computing or whatever. So that the, 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 the phrase here would be very well <coughs> written. But anyway, <coughs> look what, uh, what happened if I, if I check the second person. Estimada, Erica, is, is this too small? Maybe I, I can make this uh, bigger just for you to, to make it easier for you to see. See, now I have Estimada Erica, the second, and the third, Estimado Flavio, and the fourth, Estimada Marina, and the fifth, uh, Estimada Marisa. And notice that it's, it's, I know you're interested in institutional theory. Maybe I can go a little more sophisticated here. Uh, I could, instead of Right, this is precisely what I'm studying. I, I'll cut this off, and I would I'll go again with my rules there. I will include a rule here, and I will do a, the same sort of rule. Uh, if then else, if what uh, what is your uh, sorry if uh, if your field of research equal to information systems, Then I will insert exactly that text that I had. Uh, this is precisely what I'm studying, and your opinion contribution uh, would be very important to me. Uh, but if, if the person's uh, uh, field is not information system, I could say, uh, well, I am an information systems researcher. You know that our areas have some think in common. Therefore, I'd uh, like to count on your opinion, which is very important to me. See, I have the two uh, uh, options here. If, 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 if it was information systems, this would appear in the email, otherwise it will appear this. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason here, it's changed my lettering, but no worries, I can be, I can go back there and just say that everything I want in what size, 16 or, okay. Uh, maybe let me show you again where our fields are. I, I, I wouldn't, in, in the email, I wouldn't highlight this, but I will just keep it highlighted here. I will include a, a bold here in our fields, just to make it clearer for us to know. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I, I'm not, uh, this, this one, is, I'm not going to put it in, in black and, and, and neither this last part here. Uh, I could just then, then write, thank you for your support. And maybe Alex and whatever. Uh, you do it the way you, you wish, but no, notice here, notice how this will change uh, from person to person here. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure, see, there's an info, uh, uh, Marina is also information systems, right? Not, notice the difference between Marina that says, this is precisely what I'm studying, right? And if, if I go to someone else who's not information systems, uh, notice that it appears different. Uh, there, there's a little more polishing that I would have to do in my, in my data sets, because notice, for example, here that Marisa wrote institutional theory all in, in small letters, right? Uh, not in capital letters. And the way I wrote 
that rule information systems needed to be with capital letters. So if someone wrote information systems, small letters, uh, it will not uh, show here. So there's a lot of uh, tweaking and dealing there with our, with our database, but, but it works. See, uh, Erica works with smart cities. And what do you think if you received an email like this from someone who, well, who not only knows your name, who's careful enough to make sure that whenever there is a word that should be male or, or male, or, male or female, that they did that and then they didn't just send, well, whoever receives this uh, treats it, it's the way they want. Uh, someone who knows what you're studying, uh, someone who knows that what you're studying is not exactly what they are studying, but is somehow related and everything. Don't you think that it's easier to engage uh, with, uh, and of course, uh, one, one thing that I, I needed to include here is probably, uh, th uh, I'd like to call your opinion, uh, so maybe here I'd have to include the link to, to my research, right? And let's say that now, now uh, uh, please fill in the form uh, I included here. I don't know if this is going to work, but what I will try and do is here. I will include a form and, and the form, I'll get the form, let's say I'll get that the population of Turkey, okay? Just just get this just so that we have something to include there. Uh, <clears throat> get this short URL here, okay? And go back to, I don't know where I was. <laughs> <coughs> uh, okay, here, what I will do is, let me see, right click. Can I link, include a link here, link? And this is the link. All right, finished here. Everything seems okay. I check again, you know, I could check again uh, how it goes with different people. I have to check, sorry, uh, if, if it's changing things. And then if everything is all right, I can even, I can go directly to conclude and uh, and merge and i will say send messages via email here when you're using words of course you use words in, in excel and this will connect to outlook which is the microsoft tool so this this will work if you use uh, microsoft tools if i send here an email using it will probably ask to whom ah look at this what a problem in my data set i did forget one very important uh, thing that I should have asked you, your email, right? If I go there to my, here, look, see, 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 see how important it is that you, you plan well? I should also have uh, asked you for your email. Okay, uh, I should have included here, uh, email. Uh, I, I'll very quickly ask you if you can just include your emails in, 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 our, in our chat, because I'll have to include them. Uh, uh, well, these people here, Antonio, Erika, Flavio, Marina, I'm sorry. N notice how well we have to plan things beforehand, because Don Donna had not answered yet, or, or, or had, had you. Let me see if you, if you had. Oh, Donna has had ha answered. Okay. Uh, all right. So I have to take a Donna's text also there to our Excel. Uh, of course, I had included here a line, a column. So I have to do this. And this is also. So I have to include your emails here. Let me very quickly see where they are. And guys, for whatever reason, uh, it got stuck here. Uh, well, I'll have to fix this. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, what I'll do is, uh, as soon as I finish here with you, I will include your, your email here. And then, of course, when I go back there to, to, my, to my word here, uh, then I, I'll have to, uh, I'll have a field, one of the fields of my data set will be email, I'll include the, the email here. The, the line of, uh, of uh, subject there will be uh, 
help with my research. Let's say if that was my aim. And then I could send it, right? But I will, as soon as we finish here, I will finish this and I will send this message to you. And I want you to just uh, uh, think if, if a message like that in which the person sort of knows who you are, uh, is concerned about uh, talking to you uh, using your name and, and not saying dear, dear whoever, right? Uh, dear sir or dear madam or whatever, dear sir or madam or... Because that kind of, that, that kind of, uh, uh, of um, reference to you doesn't generate any commitment. But when I say, dear Antonio, right? There is already a connection happening there, even if we don't know each other. And I can assure you that works because I use it all the time. A lot of people sometimes, they even say, well, I don't know you, but uh, you, you seem so careful about the, the, the kind of research that you're doing that I'm pleased to help you, right? Or uh, whatever, uh, but build this connection with uh, whoever is at the other end. Okay, uh, any questions? I did, uh, my idea was not to, to fill you with details about ways of doing it. You can use Google uh, Mail Merge from Word and Excel. There are also some possibilities of using Google Merge, uh, sorry, uh, uh, using Mail Merge from Google. Uh, I may deal with that uh, next week uh, for those who are interested in that. Uh, from now on, my idea is that we do not necessarily spend uh, a lot of our Mondays, you know, with, with classes or with talks. I want you to write, uh, uh, start writing your papers. Those who are, who, who have already, who are ahead, uh, maybe just send us um, copies of, of what they have so that I, I get some of the other colleagues to read. We will start from now on. It's going to be, it has to be more practical in the sense that we will have to start developing our own uh work our own, own papers okay but next week i will still give you a few hints on how to use uh google drive to start uh, uh service from there or to, to to start sorry to start mail merge from there for those who for for, uh, for for whatever reason do not use word and excel it's a little a little tougher but uh, but but it, it also works okay so i think uh, we'll stop here i don't know if you have any questions any any doubts you will get, a, uh, you will get uh, an email from me in, in, in some 10 minutes time uh, with exactly with that uh, text that we generated here in our, in our, in our, in our mail merge. Okay. So see you then guys. Bye. 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 Bye.